There's No Such Thing as Bad Art by Brendan Bozeman. 5 p.m. and Walt was right out the door of the office. This habit of his annoyed his colleagues. He was a salaried employee, not an hourly one, but he wasn't about to put in any more time than he was contracted for. The problem with the others was that they couldn't see the big picture. Life is short, and there was a cool beer waiting for him at Doyle's. But he never made it to Doyle's. As he crossed the street, he felt the hairs on his neck going up. Then he saw a bright light and heard a deafening crack. And suddenly he was standing on the hillside out in the wilderness, still holding his briefcase and his jacket over his arm. More surprisingly, a group of men and women, both on the hairy side and wearing only loincloths, stared at him as if suddenly interrupted. One held a paintbrush. The others were organizing something that looked like candles. Walt's cell phone went off and they all scattered, leaving everything where it lay. It was just his alarm, set for 5.05 in case he somehow didn't remember to leave at 5. Bewildered, Walt tried to get his bearings. He didn't recognize his surroundings, so he checked Google Maps. His phone had no bars. He didn't perform the ritual of holding his cell phone up because he thought only idiots in the movies would think holding it two feet closer to a satellite would make any difference. He put down his briefcase and jacket and inspected the objects the people had left behind. He thought about Tatooine and wondered if the people would be back in greater numbers. That got him nervous, and he didn't know where to go. After all, how had he gotten there? Maybe he had blacked out for a minute and walked onto a movie set. But that made no sense, and he started to freak out before telling himself, Walt, calm down and assess the situation. He picked up one of the candles. Luckily, he smoked, so he had a lighter, and he explored the cave with the candle. There were paintings all over it after he got in a ways. There were animals, stick figure men, things like that. They looked an awful lot like those famous cave paintings from France. Weird. He went back to the mouth of the cave and saw no signs of civilization. He'd never been anywhere so quiet. It was getting toward dusk, and he could hardly see the stars. Well, you're not in Kansas anymore, he said. Unable to find a rational explanation for what had happened, he thought that maybe it was the obvious even if that was impossible. It was just Occam's razor. What is the simplest explanation? He had slipped into a time crack, a glitch, and he was thousands of years back in those exact French caves he had been thinking about. He could still hardly believe it, though, most of all because, oh, sure, of course, he ends up in one of the most famous places on Earth rather than some random barren slope or Antarctica or the middle of the ocean. But evidence was evidence. Being the open-minded type of guy he was, he decided to roll with it. The alternative was wandering around trying in vain to find a cell signal and dying of starvation. He assessed his surroundings. Where could he find food? Water. Shelter. Then he saw the paintbrush and paint. An irresistible urge came over him. It would waste time, but... For a prank, this was too epic to pass up. He could think about survival later. He picked up the paint and candles and went deeper into the cave. Using his cell phone for light, he went far, far in and found a side shaft where there was space to paint. He would mess with the future people big time. He felt sure he would get rescued and get back somehow, and this would be awesome to see. It would be the slowest burning joke in history. He gathered some candles, picked up the brush, and started in. 30,000 years later, Monsieur Hilaire made his way to the mouth of the cave in some haste. Monsieur Chauvet, I have something of great importance to show you. Monsieur Chauvet followed him deep into the cave. They used their cell phones for illumination. There was a group of paintings toward the front part of the cave that had already been documented, mostly animals, stick figures, and hands. 
What Monsieur Hilaire had found was far back in the recesses of the cave in an area that had never been explored. He had stumbled on a whole new area of undiscovered paintings. Human-like figures stood with small objects held to their ears. Others sat at desks with their hands on some sort of folding item. There were wheeled vehicles with people in them, and smoke came out the back of them. Farther in, they saw what looked like trains, bicycles, TVs, swimming pools. Then there were skyscrapers, highways, and suspension bridges. Even farther in were airplanes and rocket ships, including one that seemed to stand on the moon, and there was a stick figure waving. Their excitement turned somber, however, when they saw missiles in the sky, then what seemed to be mushroom clouds, and people on fire or on their knees grabbing their eyes. Others were shooting each other. Then there was a landscape of destruction, collapsed and smoking buildings, skeletons, and cockroaches running all over the place. Is this a record of the past? asked Monsieur Hilaire. Or a prediction of the future? replied Monsieur Chauvet. I must go back to get the others. Monsieur Hilaire explored a bit further. A little past the wasteland were a few more pictures. The style of painting seemed a little different to his eye, and the scene was of just a few people. It depicted a group of men grabbing one man who seemed to be wearing modern clothing, a white shirt and black pants. The group appeared to be yelling at him and pointing at the pictures. Then, in the next frame, the man lay on the ground. The others were poking him with their spears, and they were lighting a fire next to him. Another was carrying a rope. The man held a black rectangular object in his hand, and he was holding it about two feet above his head. It had colors on it, as if something were being displayed. Mon Dieu, whispered Monsieur Hilaire. Mon Dieu.